Okay, this is Mike, and I'm here with... Fair. Okay, and uh, today I am going to go over with Fair how to write prompts for Stable Diffusion. Um, this is going to be kind of an in-depth guide, uh, so we're going to kind of dive deep into like how to write a prompt and talk to the AI. Uh, people call it prompt engineering. Um, it's a little bit kind of like programming if you get to like the really technical side and we're probably not going to get that technical but if you want to know how to get uh, what you want the AI to do this is going to be kind of like how to talk to the AI to generate the images that you want. There is a book by OpenAI which is called the open AI prompt stable diffusion prompt book a lot of what I'm going to talk about is actually based on this book uh, you can just google it or it's openart.ai prompt book um, it goes over a lot of information it's got a lot of examples and cool ideas and so I would recommend that uh, some of what I tell you is probably going to come straight out of this book, and some of it is just from personal experience. The first thing I want to go over is the way the AI works is it takes random noise, and then it searches through the noise in order to try to find what you tell it to find. So it's only going to find what you tell it to find. So if we put portrait of a beautiful woman, and then we're going to go ahead and we'll say we'll make six of them so it doesn't take too long. And here we go. We're generating. Oh, that's stunning. All right. So let's look at our I love portraits. the soft light on that. Okay, so you may notice in these pictures that we're mostly getting headshots and we're not really getting a lot of body shots, but we didn't ask for that. All we asked for was a beautiful woman. So if you wanted more of the body, you know, in photography, there's something called a cowboy shot, which is a thigh up shot. Stable diffusion does not necessarily understand this. Some models, this is a cowboy shot. Some uh, models have tried to program it too, but if you type cowboy shot in there, you're probably going to get a cowboy hat, so you don't want to do that. So how do you get more of the body, right? Well, you could type body, or you could type body parts, like thighs. Now, this is going to increase the chance. And let's, let's go ahead and put, actually... Let's do this. We're going to go beautiful woman in a dress. Now, just the fact that we told it to draw a dress is probably going to give us more of a body. So now it's drawing a portrait of a beautiful woman, and it's also drawing a dress, which in order to draw the dress, it had to show us more of the body. It went full 18th century there. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Okay, so um, now, but let's say we want the full body, right? It doesn't understand full body, but we can put heels. And it's more likely to show us the full body because it has to show the feet in order to draw the heels. All right, and you can see some of these are messed up. That's just how AI goes. But you get the idea. It draws what you tell it to draw. You notice a lot of these don't really have a background, but we didn't really tell it to give us a background either. So let's keep the same prompt and put magical garden background. Got three legs there. <laughs> Okay, so that's really the first thing to go over is the AI is only going to find in the noise what you tell it to find. And so 
if you want a full body, put feet, boots. You know, if you want it from the thigh up, then you're going to, you know, probably put hips. Um, if you want a back, so we can put woman in a dress, back, butt. So, again, it draws what you tell it to draw. So, if you... Uh, or you want to try to control the pose, you can just use certain nouns. I actually call them detail nouns. I'll go over that later. But, um, yeah, it's going to find in the noise what you ask it to find. Let's go back to In Magical Garden. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, yeah, that's really pretty. I noticed that putting heels really modernizes the type of images that you get compared to, like, when you don't use the word heels. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, heels isn't in here, but we can try that. I mean, let's try it. Beautiful woman. Okay, so another thing to know is if you use a comma, a comma separates the concept for the AI. So, portrait of a beautiful woman, heels, comma, in magical garden, because these are kind of separate concepts. So now that clothes that they're wearing are a lot more modern and right. hairstyles, even like the art style. <laughs> that one's pretty cute. Now, we're generating pretty small images when we do this, and we're doing it. We don't have anything in the prompt to make the image look more fancy yet. So these are just for demonstrations. As we go along, we're going to start adding things into the prompt to make it like more detailed and more pretty. Um, so I guess the second thing I'm going to go over is... Uh, in the prompt book, they generally say that you want to put the medium first. So what type of art is it? Is it a photograph? Is it a painting? Is it a watercolor painting? Um, is it a sketch? Is it a charcoal drawing? Uh, is it a technical diagram? Like Stable Diffusion has all of these things built in the model. So we could actually put technical diagram of a beautiful woman. And because it's a diagram, she doesn't need to be in a magical garden. But we'll leave heels and see what that does. Well, we actually got it. Well, okay, there we go. <laughs> All right, that is a technical diagram of a woman in heels, isn't it? And you, you notice that we got heels on a lot of these, too. Uh, as you increase the length of the prompt, the words at the very front of the prompt, Stable Diffusion puts more power on. It's got more of an emphasis, uh, which means you're going to want your medium and your subject pretty far up in the prompt. But it also looks at the end of the prompt, and it gives that a lot of importance. And the reason why it's programmed like that is if the prompt is too long, it's going to try to ignore some of it in the middle. So the front of the prompt has a lot of weight, and the end of the prompt has a lot of weight. And, and because of that, that's why we're getting diagrams of heels, by the way, just so you know. Okay, so, but the point being, now you can put a comma on, and I actually would do this, um, on the type of medium. So now let's do watercolor. I actually really like the watercolor effect. Wow. All right, so fair. What's another kind of medium that you can think of? Um, maybe like pastel chalk? Oh, yeah. Okay. Here we go. Wow. 
Mm. Pretty colorful, huh? Mm-hmm. It used to be my favorite art media growing up when I was pink. Cool. Um, okay, so now just to show you guys a few others of these, um, an oil painting is a pretty powerful prompt. It gives us a, a pretty profound look. You can, of course, use photograph if you want something to look more photorealistic. Somewhere there's a list of all the different potential art mediums you could use. There are so many. Yeah, you can see that looks more like an I oil love painting. I that dress. Cool. So, um, I kind of like airbrush painting. Um, it seems to give a result that doesn't really look like CGI. You can put CGI as a medium, by the way, and it's going to start to look more like a, like a Pixar or something, you know? The skin's going to have kind of this plastic feel to it. Uh, airbrush painting, it doesn't really look like a photograph. It still kind of has like a, um, a painting feel to it, but it's smooth. So I tend to use it a lot. You can see that's really pretty. Okay, so we went over. It's going to uh, do what you tell it. It's going to find what you tell it to find. Um, you want to put the medium first. Then you want to put the subject. Now, to go back to what you're... Um, you, when you give it a subject, you're giving it a noun. You're telling it to draw a thing. Now, you can use a number of nouns to... I call them detail nouns. So the first thing we want is a woman. And then we want a dress. Okay. Um, but then on the dress, we want a flower print. And then we also want some lace. And what else do we want on the dress? Ruffles. We want ruffles. Anything else? Um, ribbon. We'll put ribbons. Bow. Okay. Now this is a lot of nouns. You're going from something really big, like the woman, into something smaller, a dress, into something smaller, a print, lace, ruffle, ribbon, bow. So hopefully what the AI is going to do is it's going to find the woman, then it's going to find the dress, then it's going to start to find the details in the dress. And that's why I call those detail nouns. Um, we'll talk about adjectives in a minute. I did put one adjective in here and put flower print. Uh, adjectives don't totally do that well in prompts. You can't really chain a bunch of like, I want a red lacy, roughly beautiful dress it's going to start getting confused it's going to start applying the adjectives to the entire image um, but uh, using detail nouns like this usually works pretty well so let's go ahead and hit and you can see this has made quite an elaborate dress oh that's so cute and you can see the a lot of these are young too and so as we started accessing the nodes of the AI that had to do with uh, like ruffles and lace on dresses. It's starting to find stuff that is kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, now there's ways that we could change the prompt to make sure that we only get older women. Um, but that's something to keep in mind too. Like uh, she pointed out earlier that when we put heels, it completely changed the like the time period of the people in the pictures uh, because heels are modern and so it has to access more of a modern part of the node of the AI. But there's our flower print. We have a ruffle. We have a bow. It, it actually did a really good job drawing all those detail nouns. So that's uh, so now we got nouns. We got detail nouns. 
Okay, so let's talk about adjectives for a second. Um, you can easily get away with putting an at one adjective in front of a word. Sometimes you can put two. The tendency is that the prompt is going to start to apply the the uh, the adjective to the entire picture. So. Um, So let, let's start using some adjectives here. Flowery, beautiful. Well, we don't want to put a comma. So let's see. Flowery, beautiful. Lacy. Uh, shiny. Uh, what's another adjective that I can use to describe a dress? Uh, Poofy. Poofy dress. Okay, flowery, beautiful, lacy, shiny, poofy dress. And let's just see what happens. All right, so this actually worked really well um, because now I'm getting flowers in the background. And I was trying to describe the dress. So you can see the flowers in the background. It looks really cool. So that's the something to like really keep in mind, though, that when you're writing a prompt, if you use a lot of adjectives, those adjectives are going to wind up in the whole picture. Um, now, I could rewrite this as dress, flower print, lace, shiny material. Or, or yeah, actually, I would just put satin, probably. Um you know, and maybe ruffles for poofy, you know. Uh, but I, you would actually use nouns, detail nouns, to avoid the adjectives so it doesn't grossly apply the adjectives all over the image. Um, okay, so real briefly, uh, there are a couple of ways that you can kind of connect things in stable diffusion. This is like a syntax. So you can put like a da an underscore on something to tell stable diffusion, hey, that's put that together. Um, sometimes that might help you avoid uh, problems with the adjectives bleeding over. Um, that's something to keep in mind. Another thing is you can link two concepts in stable diffusion with a colon. So let's take woman, colon, cat. <laughs> and we might actually get a cat girl. Now, sometimes it may give me a cat. Sometimes it may give me a woman. Ooh, that looks like the cat's movie. Okay, but you could... Oh, wow, that's a pretty good cat. Okay, but you can definitely see woman, colon, cat connected those two things together, and so that's something to keep in mind. Um, in a more advanced lesson, we can go over... You can actually increase the strength of woman and cat to basically force it to make a cat-woman hybrid by adding extra power to it, but... Just for now, colon is a way to link things. Um, another way to link things is to use uh, the word as. So we can put woman as bounty hunter. And now we have a woman who's a bounty hunter. Now, you could also write that female bounty hunter, but keep in mind the word as does connect two concepts together. Um, you can use this for movie stars. So, like, uh, who would you want to play Batman? Ian Somerhalder? Da -da 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 -da. As Batman. Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> And there we 
we go. Ooh, he makes a nice platform. Okay, so the word as can be used to link two concepts. I um, actually did some uh, images where I was trying to make a dryad, which is like a tree fairy, and I put woman as tree. And uh, as it connected those two concepts, it grew hair out of the, or like a, a, a tree out of the top of the women's heads, like their hair turned into trees. It was pretty neat. Um, so colons, uh, I, I would go ahead and recommend that you use an underscore to try to prevent adjective bleed. So let's say a uh, woman adventurer, red underscore cape. Now just because I put the word red, stable diffusion is horrible. Um, if you put a word, that word is going to bleed, a, a color, the color is going to bleed all over the image. Just fair warning. If you, you know, put green eyes, you're probably going to get a green dress. <laughs> <laughs> this is giving me, um, little red riding hood type of vibes. And, and this is maybe a good example. I told it I wanted a red cape, but... Now I'm getting a red dress too, right? Um, now if I tried to specify here, green eyes, white shirt. Now I may, because I use the word eyes here, it's gonna wanna find some eyes. So that might actually like zoom the picture in but it may not. We'll see. Yeah, it actually did. Yeah, I was right. Okay. But she has red pants. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that's just another thing to keep in mind, that when you specify colors, the colors will bleed into the image. Okay, so let's talk about background for a second. So we have our medium, then we're going to use a noun for a subject. Then we're going to use some detail nouns, or like in a dress. Um, we were playing around yesterday, and she said glass city and it actually made a city in a glass. Uh, but as an example, you could say that city in glass. And let's see what it does. Wow, that looks really cool. It didn't do what it did yesterday. It actually drew the city inside a glass, like a mm. cup. This is like a sheet of glass or something though. Yeah. And by the way, using the word magical there, every once in a while you might have an image that has magical sparks in it or something. Like if you put the word in there, the AI is going to look for it. I guess her legs are pretty magical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in, in fact, look, it's like she's holding a little wand and there's mm. like sparks or something out of it, right? Um, so so I know that maybe she's like trying to do magical tricks. You know, the AI does try to kind of draw what you tell it to draw. So like keep that in mind. So I have my medium, an airbrush painting. I have my subject, beautiful woman. I have detail nouns, dress, lace. Um, I have specified a background in magical back in magical garden. Now I actually recommend you actually write the word background. Um, after what you want in the background that does seem to help um, and then also added a detail to the background which is night sky and so I get this That's I really love the colors 
Yeah, that one's really pretty. Uh, by the way, using night sky in a background gives you really beautiful blues. It's a, uh, it, it, it gives you really nice color. It's just kind of a hint. Um, okay, so let's talk about prepositions for a second, like in, on, above, through. Uh, these words do kind of tell the AI where to put something. Um, it is really helpful if you go subject and then you have you specify a background. If you use the word in, uh, that does kind of help it put the subject in the background. Um, but we could put woman um, on staircase. I'm going to leave this other stuff. This might be weird. Oh, that's actually cool. So the word on works. You can put somebody sitting on something. Um, you can put things in something. So we could say beautiful woman in a glass bottle. And let's see if we actually get a woman in a bottle. Now, this is a little bit of a harder concept because the AI is not going to have a lot of pictures of women in bottles in it, and so it's going to kind of struggle with it. But um, sure enough, we did get one. And there we go. There's a woman in a bottle. And that's another thing to kind of keep in mind. Uh, you may have to make 10 images to get the AI to combine the concepts that you want it to combine. But if you use the right language, then it will. Um, okay, so that's pretty much all I'm going to say about prepositions for now. So let's go back to, we have an airbrush painting, beautiful woman, detail noun dress, detail noun lace. Um, we, we can put standing in magical garden. The word in there actually in some ways is, is really telling stable diffusion that the, what's going to come after that is, a, is the background sort of. Uh, so but we're going to put in magical garden background night sky. Let's generate that. Now this is the format that I recommend. You're gonna go medium, subject, subject details. Then you're gonna go into the background, specify any details in the background, and then you're gonna go to your stylizers. So <clears throat> the stylizers are words that change the look and feel of the picture, but not the subject matter. Uh, technically, the medium is, is something I would call a stylizer because it gives a style to the image. Um, some really common ones that people use are intricate, highly detailed. Um, I'll show you what colorful does in a second. It's a pretty interesting stylizer. Uh, professional, that'll tend to access like professional paintings and photography in the AI node to like give you a better quality image. Um, there are lighting stylizers, like you can put studio lighting and it'll change the lighting in the image. Uh, sometimes though, it'll draw studio lights. It'll bleed over and it'll draw studio lights in the image. So I typically don't like to use that. Uh, soft lighting will tend to uh, kind of give you more of a soft not harsh, smooth, not harsh shadows, but more smooth. Um, Octane Render is a type of 3D program that renders lighting, and so people put that in there, and it adds more detail. Uh, Unreal Engine, some people use that. Some people use one called Trending on Art Station, and when... Uh, now this does not go on the internet and uh, look at what's trending on ArtStation. It just looks at 
anything that the AI was trained on that was trending on ArtStation at the time that the reference images were done, but it can have an effect and make things look better. Um, let's see if I can think of any other ones off the top of my head here. Um, realistic? Yeah, realistic. You can use beautiful as a stylizer. It does kind of um, change things. HD? Yeah, HD. Um, for some reason, 8K actually makes a big difference. Um, now, you can just load these up. Each one of them is changing something about the image. Um, so let's go ahead and run it with all these stylizers on, and let's see what it does. All right, here we go. Uh, now we can definitely see we're getting more details. We're getting more intricacy. Like if you look in the leaves here. Wow, look at the lace the on that lace dress. The lace is beautiful. So the dress is way more intricate. Um, intricate is a really powerful stylizer. It's actually one of my favorites. Look at the texture on the fabric. You can see like the tool and the lace. Yeah, okay, so um, so there's your format. You're going to go medium, subject, specify the background, put any stylizers in there that you want. And then the last thing you're going to do is specify artist. Now, this is a whole video in and of itself to talk about different artists. Um, but you're going to put by, and the word by tell Stable Diffusion that this is an artwork of this person. And so we're going to put Norman Rockwell and see what happens. Now, understand that by Norman Rockwell is just another stylizer. Uh, it's competing with intricate, highly detailed, professional Octane Render Unreal Engine, trending on ArtStation, realistic beautiful HD 8K. It's competing with all that. It's getting mixed with all that. However, it is at the end of the prompt, and whatever is at the end of the prompt, Stable Diffusion thinks is more important, just like whatever is at the front of the prompt, which is why you go medium subject first, um, and then artist last. That's a way to like go, hey, this is important. So if we run it, And it's definitely had a huge influence, I can tell. It actually looks better. Wow. wow. Stunning. Yeah, that's really cool. I love the layers on that track. Now, by the way, the faces are kind of messed up on this. Um, if we make the image larger, it would probably fix the faces. But there's also this little button here that says restore faces. And so let's just run the same six images with restore face. Now what this does is there's an algorithm that is going to blow the face up. It's going to redraw it, and then it's going to put it back into the image. And so this should make the faces look prettier. It's essentially rendering the image, and then it's rendering the face. And so it's slower if you use restore face. I typically don't use it um, because I'm gonna. If I really like something, I'm gonna blow it up anyway. But you can see those faces do look a little better. So there is that option. Um, also, some artists that you use, uh, maybe they're like more realist, and that will tend to make the face look better. Or if you pick an artist who specializes in very high-quality portraits, you may get really beautiful faces. Um, artists are really powerful. Now, you can use the word and after artist name to tell it basically to mix the artist. And so we're going to go to this website here, which is called AIPromptGuide.com. And this is a list of all the artists that are on Stable Diffusion, and there's over 2,000 of them. Um, 
This also has uh, stylizers on it. But let's look for... Yeah, we're going to look at painters. Now, I'm just going to kind of scroll down here. Okay, Albert Lynch. This guy is going to make our faces look better. So we're going to put by Norman Rockwell and Albert Lynch. And we're going to run it. Now, sometimes the artist that you choose is really going to affect what the clothes come out as. Because if you pick an artist from the 16th century, you may start seeing 16th century clothes. And you can see um, these are looking quite a bit more sort of detailed and pretty than when we started with the simple images. So let's pick one more artist and there's an illustrator that I like to use I gotta make sure I'm getting his name Kevin Sloan this guy is awesome um, he does these like really detailed fine illustrations and if you stick him in your prompt it's gonna clean the prompt up some um, I'm running the same images, by the way. Uh, so we could change things in the prompt and probably get a very similar image, but a little bit different. See, the face actually looks a little better. Now, there are ways to fix the faces, um, which we'll go over in a, in a future video. Uh, these are pretty freaking good images, though. But this is the last thing you're going to put in your prompt is going to be artist. Uh, you can mix a lot. Uh, typically, you know, if you're trying to, like, copy one artist style, you probably just want one. Um, but you could probably go and five times and have five different artist names in there and still get a little bit of influence from that. Um, I guess there's like one last kind of comment to make. So if we go back to this where we have these different artists, let's try to find somebody who is kind of an impressionist with light. Okay, so this wasn't exactly what I was looking for, but if you look at these images, so this is there's a lot of realism here, right? Um, and so let's see what that does. So we're going to go back here. Let's get rid of Albert, and let's put this realist guy. So, you know, you could put Picasso there and get some kind of... Now you're you're breaking your realism. You start to get something more cubistic. Um, it just depends on what kind of style you want. Uh, you can, like, look at their shoulders here, and you've got this really pretty soft light now. And you kind of have this like nice kind of soft light on the hair there too, so I I can see the influence of that artist on there. Okay, here we go. This is okay. So here's Zorn and or Andrew Zorn, and you can see uh, it's not finely detailed, but man, does this guy paint with light? He loves these beautiful highlights, right, and this kind of contrast. So. Um, I actually use this guy a lot just because I like what it does to the hair and stuff. So I'm going to put him and I'm going to get rid of the realist person. Okay, let's go ahead and randomize it now. We'll run 10. And now we should get some really kind of beautiful highlights on the hair from that artist. Oh, yeah, look at that face. That's going to be gorgeous. Cool, that's awesome. All right. What do you think? I love the lace. See, I guess as a photographer, I am I love the lighting. <laughs> <laughs> um and you can see these images are quite a bit more gorgeous than when we first started this video and we were just like, oh, a girl in a dress. You know, and sometimes they had three legs. <laughs> um, 
one last time. Um, so here's the format for the prompts. We go the medium, we have the subject, we have noun details describing or or things that are on the subject. Uh, then we're going to specify the background. We are going to use the word in and put background to really tell it that this is the background. Then we can specify things about the background, like we could put spaceship after night sky, and you might get a spaceship. Then you have your stylizers. Um, then you have your artist names. Now, you could actually even do this and put your subject and your background in parentheses. Now, just putting parentheses on something tells Stable Diffusion that it's more important. Um, this really sort of let's go ahead and put parentheses on our stylizers too because now we've basically broken the prompt into four parts now in later videos when we go over like how to do in painting and how to um, blow the images up and upscale them it's really important that you have these different parts of the image because when you in paint you're going to need to take, like say you're in-painting the face, you're going to need to take the standing and magical garden night sky out, or it may make a night sky on the face that you're trying to paint. <laughs> 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 so if you keep your prompt ordered and nice where you just have the medium, the subject, the background, the stylizers, and the artist names, um, you're going to have an easier time adjusting that prompt when you start to do other things with the image, which is why I think this format is so good. Um, now, if we look at the images, uh, you can see these are quite a bit more intricate and pretty compared to when we first started and we just had a woman in a dress. In fact, the dress is insane. The amount of detail is just breathtaking. Yeah, and so I'm going to end this video by... I'm just going to blow... We'll, we'll take a couple of these images and then we'll, we'll run them through an upscaler. Um, a lot of times, you know, if you're rendering the... I'm only rendering these images at 512 by 728, which is pretty small. And so, um, let's see, let's go to three. So, Stable Diffusion doesn't have, like, a whole lot of room to draw the detail in the face. So, if all I do is I blow these images up, then it's going to give Stable Diffusion more space to draw the face, and the face is going to come out prettier. That's one reason why, if you do, like, a close-up of the face you'll see these beautiful faces. But then if you have a full body shot like this, uh, it doesn't really have enough room to, to render the face really super pretty. Um, now, like I said, in future videos, we'll go over how to correct that. Um, but... Oh, I think I had a setting wrong, and so it's just going to make three random images, but it's going to blow them up. So we're going to end the video on that. Um, this is going to take a second to render, and then I will show you the results. All right, so here's our final images. The faces look so much better. Yeah, and, and so I just wanted to bring that point up. When you're doing the initial small images... Um, just blowing them up is going to fix the faces. Apparently, it also gave her a gun. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if uh, we open this in a new tab, we can actually see. This There's is someone in the background. Oh, yeah, yeah. AI art is fun. You never know what you're going to get. Maybe she's running because the other girl has a gun. <laughs> um 
anyway, you get the idea. So that is the order of which you write a prompt. In a future video, we're going to talk about weighting the different uh, things in the prompt to give you more or less. And then we're going to talk about mixing. And we're going to talk about artist mixing. Um, so this is really just the beginning, but this video is a good deep dive into a format for a prompt. Uh, if you have any questions, let us know. Uh, at some point, FAIR is going to be streaming, uh, making artwork in real time for you guys to enjoy. I hope you guys will tune in. And uh, we will see you again soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.